Yo, what up, what up, it's Nickel here, and now we're gonna learn about Newton's three laws of motion. And so if you look here, you need to set up your science notebook page with a title at the top, and you need to leave room to write all three of Newton's laws of motion. So let's get into it. So maybe you have always thought this way, but for over 2,000 years, most people thought, and scientists too, thought that objects have a tendency to stop. And if you want them to keep moving, you have to apply a force. So what we've noticed, or what a lot of people noticed in early times, and maybe you, this is how you see the world so right now, is that when an object is in motion, it will completely, or it will come to a, stall, a, a halt. It will stop. And that happens on its own. So all objects have a tendency to stop. If you kick a soccer ball or roll a ball down the road, um, eventually all of these items will stop. And that was what people thought for over 2,000 years. Well, Isaac Newton became famous with his three laws of motion because he decided that he needed to investigate that a little bit further. And so he dug into this and he realized that people actually had this wrong. So in the 1600s, he presented three laws of motion and he was able to look at the world a little bit differently. And that's why we're learning physics in this class, so that we can see the world in the true form in the way that things interact and that you're not just assuming that you know. So let's dig in here. The first law of motion. Isaac Newton said that, um, or what he discovered, as well as using the um, advice from Descartes and Galileo, two other scientists that preceded him before him, he distilled this down to one law that said, an object at rest will stay at rest, and an object in motion will stay or continue in motion unless it's acted upon by an outside force. Remember, a push or a pull. So an object at rest will stay at rest, an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted upon by an outside force. Now this is completely opposite of what people thought. So let's describe why that's happening. So if we have an object that's in motion, the reason that it will eventually stop is not because all objects stop, but it's because of this outside force. And you may have guessed it, but here the outside force is the friction of the surface. And so if we have a nice smooth surface, the object in motion will remain in motion for longer because there's less friction. If we have more friction on the surface and we have like a grassy surface and we try to push a block across that grassy surface, it's not going to travel as far because there's more friction. There's more outside forces that will then cause it to stop moving. So an object at rest will stay at rest and an object in motion will stay in motion unless it's acted upon by an outside force. So a lot of what we need to start doing is figuring out what are the outside forces that are causing objects to speed up, slow down, or to stop. All right. So after learning about Newton's first law, you should be asking yourself, well, how does a force affect an object's motion? Because not all forces affect all objects equally. You can kick a tree and it won't move, and you can kick a soccer ball and it will fly across the field. So let's dig into this second law. So for the second law, um, Isaac Newton defined this as the acceleration or the increase of speed, the mo motion of an object depends on the mass of the object and the force that's applied, the push or the pull. All right, so this can be described. The acceleration of an object depends on the mass of the object and the force applied. This can be described with a simple mathematic equation. So let's dig into this. So F this is equal to the force. The M is equal to mass, and the A is the acceleration. So if we dig into this, we can figure out that the acceleration of an object depends on the mass and the force that's applied. Or you could say that the force that something, that something applies depends on its mass and how fast it's moving, its acceleration. So let's look at an example of this. If we were to apply a force to this 100-pound box, now the unit for force equals a newton because these are Newton's laws, so coincidentally they named the unit of force a newton. So let's say we apply um, 6 newtons of force to this 100-pound box. 
Now, this 100 pound box with six newtons of force um, likely would not move because six newtons is not a ton of force. But let's say that on this 100 pound box, let's say that it did cause a little bit of motion because a really heavy box at six newtons of force might ap apply this much acceleration, this tiny little amount of acceleration. Now, if we apply the same amount of force, six newtons of force, to a mass that is 10 pounds, then the force is going to be, I'm sorry, the acceleration, the acceleration is going to be different because of the mass of the object. So you can see that if you apply the same force to two different masses, the acceleration will be different. Also, if you have two different masses that are traveling at the same acceleration, the force will be different. You can imagine getting hit by a 60 mile per hour ping pong ball opposed to a 60 mile an hour bowling ball. If both of them are traveling at an acceleration of 60 miles an hour, they have different masses and so therefore they're going to apply a different force. You can imagine which one would hurt more. All right, so let's now dig into the third law of motion. Um, this has to do with the collisions of objects. So you can imagine that bowling ball hitting you or uh, the ping pong ball hitting you, or if you're trying to push a box across the floor, um, the third law of motion states that when an object, or let's call them object A and B. So when, it, when object A exerts a force on object B, then B exerts an equal and opposite force on object A. Now, that sounds a little bit confusing, but um, basically for every action that you push or pull, every force has an equal and opposite force. So if we dig in a little bit more, we got an alien here that um, is pushing on a wall. That's not a ladder, that is truly a wall. That let's say that this alien is leaning on the wall and the wall is not moving. So since alien is here, letter B, let's draw an arrow in this free body diagram to show that the alien is pushing towards the wall. Well, the wall is actually pushing back towards the alien equally, and so therefore there is not any motion that's happening because these two arrows are equal and opposite in direction. So if we were to draw a new free body diagram of this whole system combined, what we could say is that the alien is not moving because the alien is being pushed on by the wall and the alien is pushing on the wall. So we could say this is the force of the wall pushing on the alien forward and this is the force of the alien pushing on the wall backwards. So therefore, since these two arrows are equal in size and opposite in direction, then there's no motion happening here. Now, if we look over here at um, somebody that's flip, flicking a uh, coin across the table, at first they put their finger on the coin and then they have to apply a certain force to get that coin to move. You can imagine if that were a brick and they tried to do that, they would have to apply a lot more force. So the mass of this object matters, like what we talked about in Newton's second law. So if we say that this A is the hand, the hand is going to apply a forward force on the coin, and the coin does not weigh very much, but as you know by flicking a coin across the table, you can feel it on your finger, and so it's going to apply a force in the backward direction onto the finger. So if we actually look at the free body diagram of the coin, the coin is going to be flicked by the finger with that certain amount of force and it's going to have a backwards force of its own weight that's going to push it's going to end up pushing on the finger but that weight does matter so we can imagine that if it were a brick then the forward force is going to be the same and the backwards force is going to be different now here you can see let me get a different color you see that this arrow is much longer than the backwards arrow so if this were a coin then it would move, there would be motion, because um, this line in the forward direction is bigger than the line in the backward direction. Now if this were a brick, we might see something different happen. And this one, the forward push by the finger is equal to the weight. And since these are equal and opposite, then there is no motion. So you can see that no matter 
what's happening, whether there's no motion or if there is motion that occurs or no motion that occurs, every single time two things interact, A interacts with B and B interacts with A. They provide an equal and opposite force. So when object A exerts a force on object B, B exerts an equal and opposite force on object A. Now that you know Newton's three laws of motion, make sure that you have those recorded in your science notebook. And as we go through the different examples, we're literally trying to prove and substantiate these laws of motion. So let's get to it.